Oh la, what a dish, Arlette. She and I are just a darling irresistible. And if you aren't the country cousin to end all country cousins, kind gentleman, a kind word for a kind lady. La la la, that's a harsh word. You better just give me a kind look. Oh la, that looks good. Settle a smile on your face, dear man, and give me a taste of a little kiss. Oh, a man can be such a beast. And now you see, ah, that Chino, a secret of woman's virtue. Give her scorn for her love. And she is outraged to the point of virtue. Walk the paths of a furious virtue, Signore Ar Arlecchino. Don't touch me, you deliciously indecent man. If you come near me, you devilish temptation, you taste your most obscene. I'll scream, you impetuous fool. You non-stop dear devil, I'll call my lame husband, you hard-headed libertine, and he'll talk you to go away, tell you to go away. Don't turn your back when I talk to you. Don't run off when I'm repulsing you, you outrageous poltoon thief. You cannot just speak to me. There you see, Arlecchino, what a vice virtue is. How can a virtuous woman tempt without temptation? How does she do it, Arlecchino? Study the ways of women. Oh, Arlecchino, you're blushing. Don't blush, Arlecchino. What happier thing can a false virtue become than a practiced fraud? Listen to me, Signora Arlecchino. When you so rough that lovers run from your modest indignation, the time has come to fetch lovers for the lovers. A happy ball. Fetch and carry lusty maids and lusty men. Trip to your grave with love's gold in one hand, love's letters in the other, love's memories in your head and love's trinkets in your pockets, and lie down at last in a paralyzed decorum. Oh, what a thing it is to be incognito. Everybody, look. Look at the incognito. Who is this silent little darling whose memories lie behind these pretty eyes, whose bosom is swelling behind the swelled bosom, whose wisdom is behind this folly? Magical Arlecchino, how thoroughly you are tucked away. Nothing can find you out but Cynthia and your own salvation. There it is, Arlecchino. Knock, and it will open. Lift your skirts and walk right in, and nothing that has eyes to see can have the wit that stopped you. No husbands, no lovers, no old men, no young men. Arlecchino, have you forgotten about me? Woman, I have forgotten about you. Cruel Arlecchino, why are you dressed like that? In this, what comes of your promise? In this, how you remember about my husband's teeth? Your husband's teeth? Little promises since I left you. I have been gnashing my own. Arlecchino had neither wine, nor meat, nor dessert, nor what he intended from you. And he has tossed your business from his pocket and is in a hurry pursuing a business of his own. How wrongfully you abuse me, Arlecchino. Could you not see in my impatience how I long to be rid of that old crow cove yellow and give you that banquet i promised you so fully only this favor only play this one trick of my husband and see how laminia can answer for promise wise lady do you think that arlecchino lives by foolish impulse who knows better than arlecchino the folly of learning the same lesson twice i will tell you a secret laminia once when arlecchino was rich enough to own a very long sheet of paper he catalogued on one side all the virtues of wisdom all the lessons of caution, all the maxims of restraint, and would you believe it, they added up to the blessed truth. On the other side, he catalogued all the follies of the world, all sweet promises, all tantalizing hopes, all yearnings and lovely cravings, all the hungers of the body, the soul, and the mind. And do you know, they added up to heartbreak, anguish, disenchantment, and despair. Little promiser, how was a man to choose? Very well, you chose wisdom, and so will have nothing to do with me. Then goodbye. No, no, I left wisdom to the wise man and hugged all the sweet follies to my heart. Wonderful Flaminia, only make your promises tantalizing enough and you can ask anything of me. Promise me bliss and tell me what you want me to do. Arlecchino, you dear, clever madman, hurry into my house and be ready for pantalone. I have sent for my husband and told him I have found a dentist for him to cure his breath. Hurry into the house, disguise yourself as a dentist and return. Disappear, Arlecchino. He is coming, a sly. And remember, not a word of this to Coviello, that awful jealous man. Not a word. This way, pantalone, shove it this way and pull a little harder. Don't fall. Oh, the poor man is smelling his strength. 
His strength. Keep up his strength, Coviello. He he he. Don't fall, Pantalone. Oh, if he falls, the poor man will never get up. I'll get up, curse you, and you'll never again get up. Don't tip the basket, Pantalone. Ah, he's crushing his foot. His poor old foot. He'll never walk again. Right through your door, you old eunuch, and walk into your bedroom and into your bed. Save his foot. And keep on walking. Thank heaven he didn't stuff it too full of lemons so that he could still drag it along. You didn't stuff it too full of lemons, did you, Pantalone? No, no, there's room enough for a body. Room enough for a body? <laughs> Thank heaven for your sake, Pantalone. What a burden for a man to spread. It's a firm chest, Pantalone. It won't come apart. No, no, it could hold a man's weight and not come apart. Man's weight. Oh, weight. Man's weight. <laughs> And please, for your sake, Pantalone, a firm chest, and it will not come apart. Aren't you pleased, Zani, for Pantalone's sake? Delighted, delighted for Pantalone. So many of my kind neighbor, here is the chest of lemons Pantalone carried for you with the help of his good friend Zani and myself. A thousand thanks to your neighbor, and depend upon it, Pantalone will find a way to reward you. Generous neighbor, Coviello wants no other reward than the joy of seeing Pantalone foster the, the delight and comfort of his wife, a good woman, happy to bear her husband many sons, yea, many sons. Where is this dentist, Flaminia? Pantalone is ready, girded for sacrifice. Girded and trussed, stuffed tight and feathered. Then you are ready, dear husband, for whatever befalls. Ready? He's ripe and spoiling. Did you ever see a man so ripe for what befalls? So be it, honest Flaminia. Let him come. Come out, good dentist. My husband is asking for whatever befalls. Qui nomine patris. Where is the hapless man? Worthy practitioner, did you find all your comforts while waiting in my house? Sanctum sanctorum. Lead me to my object. Praise heaven and your craft, good man. Here, here is the will and patience. Simplex simplicimus. Shall we begin? Begin. Bring him a chair. A chair? A chair for Pantalone. A rope. A rope? <laughs> I have just the rope for Pantalone. A rope. Why did you need a rope? Be seated, Pantalone. Somebody tell me why he needs a rope. Put your faith in the dentist, Pantalone. Pantalone, this is your day of judgment. Running away, husband, where is your great Stop and alone. Where? What is there to be afraid of? Is there anyone afraid? Who is afraid? <laughs> not Pantalone. No, not Pantalone. Not with his wife beside him. Not with his friends here to give him courage. Tell him. Tell me why he needs a rope. Tie him. Don't move, Pantalone. For your own sake, dear man, hold your seat. For your own sake. For your very own sake, dear sweet Pantalone. For your sake. For you. <laughs> for nobody else but you. In manu suas. Rubrificationus nubus ex excrementabilis fungi fungi. Ah, learned sir, hunt about for a while and see if there are any you can see. We shall see. Open. Gently, gently. Hold on a little longer, Pantalon. You're doing well, Pantalone. Very well. Let it happen, Pantalone. Don't fight it. Flaminia, where is he? Has, has he flown away? One. No more. No more. No more. Husband, the good dentist has only just begun. Open. Open again. Not for the devil himself. Devil. Not for salvation. They use all of our talk. Open his mouth. Never. Never will that fiend see the inside of my mouth again. See it? He will smell it. In the north of England, they will smell it. Do you want me to die of the stink of your breath? <sighs> if I kill the world with its breath, let that hellhound be the first to go. Let it stink. Let it breathe fire. But it will stay as it is. Stay as it is. He's mad. He's mad. Pantalone's gone mad. Help. My husband is possessed. Possessed. Of what am I possessed? Of a devil who... Wife who brings devils to tear tear teeth out of my jaws, of a breath that befells men, would shrink flowers and make even the canal hold its nose. Oh, my life, what a toothache you've become. 
Where is that consolation? Find her out, Pendulos. Find her and have a devil. Time or no time, tooth or no tooth. Plug your consolation to you now. French, Francis Sheena, Francis Sheena, beggar is at your door. Your friend, Pantalonis, come begging. Sweet Pantalonis, who had thievish lout has been knocking the teeth out of your mouth. No, my own wife charged me to submit to a dentist, a devilish executioner, who has cost me the remains of my beauty. Beauty lies deeper in a man than his teeth. What curious discerning woman has ever put off from a man at the loss of a few teeth? Iphigenia. Oh, I pray God your understanding doesn't lead to such another remedy. Francis Sheena is a simple remedy for a man's sorrows. Come with Francis Sheena, and the whole loss will be made up to you. First tell me, good woman, what is my breath? What is it? It is breath. It doesn't offend you. No more than my own. Oh, my consolation. How, Pantalone? We are the same odor. A clear night. A clear road, a clear disguise, a clear pleasure of what a man will do to keep a husband smiling. Waste no time on monologues, Leandro. Get into Cynthia's house before that other country maiden comes to call. Cynthia, oh lord, will she put me to the protest of order before I get into the house? Who is there? Can it be my little country cousin? She will, by well, Leandro, the rattle of metaphors tonight, right up to the door of the bedroom. Ah, Leandro, so humbled as to mock his ma manhood, cruel Cynthia, to humble her lover with a foolish disguise. Oh, my darling, be sure, be sure that far from this basement, from this debasement, Cynthia will have you right. She will see to it. My tender minister, how could I doubt? Don't I remember how out of baseness you have made me rise before? Memories, Leandro, precious memories. How many memories we have hoarded up, Leandro? Of meetings and pay partings, of fallings and risings in the near brightness of the moon, remember? In the downpour at noon, if I forget. At matins, at laws, at each of the canonical hours. Oh, my breviary, my can, my office. Oh, my divine service, my sanctity, my holiness, come, let us pray. Is he gone? He is gone. Oh, Pantalone. Now you're a mad dog as well as a fool. You have the keys to the chest. Yes, from Pantalone's pocket. When did you get them? When the fool was tied in the chair and howling about losing a tooth. But you were not near his pocket. I have them just the same. But Zani, if you weren't near his pocket, the action isn't probable. It isn't even possible. Is this Aristotle or Comedia? Get into the chest. Curses on these lemons. Can you carry me in all the lemons too? Yes, yes, get in. Zani can bear the burden for Pantalone. Have no fear, Coviero. Get in. Oh, let me sit down and enjoy this moment. Oh, Pantalone, you have no father. Here is your offspring in this chest, and here in your deliverer, sitting on it in a moment, in less than a moment, Zani will undo you. No, you, no husband. What are you waiting for, Zani? Pick up the chest and carry me into the house. <laughs> if you could see me now, Pantalone, Wherever you are, what a pity you can't see me now, you fool, you trusting father, you know father and no husband. Hurry and get me inside and go back to your own house before you are missed there. Don't you want to hurry home? Yes, yes, there's entertainment for me at home too. But this moment is so blessed, I can't bear to give it up for what is waiting for me in my own house. <laughs> oh, Pantalone, you old blind, deaf, mad, trusted fool, older than the wisest man, and he knows nothing. Zani, what's the matter? Is the chest too heavy for you? Too heavy for me? <laughs> Zani can bear anything for Pantalone. If, if only it is for Pantalone, Zani can bear it. Come into the house. Flaminia, here are your lemons. Welcome, welcome, Zani. Oh, at last, a clear road to Cynthia's door, a clear night, a clear disguise, a clear pleasure. Oh, what a man will do to keep a husband smiling. What a lovely conceit, Arlecchino. Where's the lover who, on the brink of his salvation, can concede to such a conceit? The wise head you carry, Arlecchino. Oh, Cynthia, wisdom is here for salvation. Your little cousin is here from the country, just arrived, Cynthia, to learn all about the downs with me. My little country cousin is already in my house. What devil is out there wanting to make a fool of Cynthia? No, Cynthia, I am not in your house. I am out here waiting within. Open the door, and you will see me just as you expected to. 
Go away and stop your lying. You are not out there, but sitting beside me now. And oh, <laughs> you're tickling me. Tickling you. I'm not even near you. Open the door and I'll be glad to tip you. Stop tickling me. Not until you let me in. Let me in and I'll stop you. Stop tickling you gladly. Oh, that's better, darling little cousin. Darling, darling little cousin. That's very nice. What's very nice? Open the door, Cynthia, so that I can see what I am doing. Come out here and you'll see me where I say I am. Won't you believe your senses? Won't you believe your eyes? My senses? Much more than my eyes. What a dreadful liar you are. You tell me. I can see that. When all the time I can feel you here. But you see me. I am here, Cynthia. See? You can't see me. There, if you see me here. Tell man to feel only what he sees. And then see what Cynthia feels and feels as you please about what you see. Alecino. What am I doing there? He turns around. Oh. Alecino, Alecino, are you with me? If you are with me here, then what are you doing there? You, Alecino, tell me. Which of me are you? You, Alecino, tell me. Which of me are you? You, Alecino, where are you? Oh, tell me. Did you know about this abbreviated Alecino? Oh, little ghost of Alecino, go away from the door and let me be alone with Cynthia. Oh, little ghost of Alecino, go away from the door and let me be alone with Cynthia. But to look at me, ghost, I am not a ghost. I am flesh, flesh, and nerd. No help from you, spirit, to win my salvation. Go away. But look at me, ghost. I am not a ghost. I am flesh, flesh, and need no help from you, spirit, to win my salvation. Go away. Alecino, don't go back alone. Oh, my soul, what good is your salvation without my flesh to share in it? Spirit, Alecino. May Arlecchino take this devilish flesh with you. Oh, Arlecchino, this is the worst trick of all. You to have your soul saved without your body. What man can endure such a cheat and disappointment? Hey, Arlecchino, come here. Can you live like a clever liar? No. Then die like an honest man. Throw off your disguises and be yourself. Take your lying spirit clean. Cast out your fraudulent soul. Throw away your art, that phantom toss off, that cheat, your laughter. Let your immortal flesh die as naked as truth. There you are, Arlecchino. All right, kill yourself. Doctor! Miraculous doctor! How did you save yourself from hell? I was interrupted. Were you there, great man? Did the devil carry you all the way to hell? To its very door. What did you see there? Tell me. Whom did you meet? I'll tell you. When I got to the very gate, when I knocked to get in, on the strength of a promise, mind you, the door opened. Someone came out to meet me, and who do you think it was? Who? Who? A devil? Worse, much worse. A monster, a three-headed thing. Worse than that. What? What? What horror met you? Myself. Myself came to the door, told me to go away, and went back and ran without me. A miracle. A miracle, and hell come. Princess Sheena must hear about this. Princess Sheena, Princess Sheena. Another time, Zani. The doctor must get back to some business he was attending to. No, no, Princess Sheena must see the good doctor again and have a magician to turn her child. Come out, Princess Sheena. The magical jewel is there. Why are you interrupting me in the midst of nursing your child? Forgive me, Princess Sheena. Were you in the midst of nursing him? Right in the midst of it, you idiot. When you shouted... Are you fondling him, Princess Sheena? Are you showing him great love and tenderness? More than you could imagine, you fool. Greater than you could dream of. Let me come in and play a bit with the little dear. Do you think, Doctor, he would be happy to see his father? Play with him? You mad old Bali, what are you thinking of? He would scratch out your eyes. What, he would scratch out the eyes of his loving father? Run to the market stalls and bring him a toy. Come to see him with a toy in your hands, and then you can play with him. A toy? Where am I to get a toy in the middle of the night? Run, you old palsy, and don't come back until you find him a toy. If I do, will he be happy to see me then? He will kiss you and bless you, kiss you and bless you forever. I'll find him a toy, Francis Sheena. Keep him happy, good mother, and until I return. He'll be happy until you return, I promise you. A liar. Cheat. You proud of a doctor. Are you standing there accusing me of breaking my word? Good woman, I haven't opened my mouth. Deceit, deceit, I swear, Francis Sheena will be quits with you for this abuse. What are you supposing, you lecherous fraud, that Francis Sheena promised you her virtue, that she swore she would lie with you? I suppose.
absolutely nothing, modest lady, except that I want her very often as you want me to go. Lie with you, you foul beast! Give you Francesina's virtues, you scheming hypocrite! That's what you supposed, I promised! I suppose you supposed. You supposed, you supposed, you supposed I promised, and then you cheat. You supposed I would never redeem my promise. Prince, Princess Sheena, to whom honesty is more than all the other virtues? Very well, then, you outrage. If you supposed I would bed you, I will bed you for days and days without number. I'll redeem that promise a hundred times, a thousand times over, that you will know that Princess Sheena knows how to keep her word, and then she will be quits with your lying deceit forever. Oh, you woman, you think Ar Arlecchino doesn't remember what promises are made to him. Then listen to Arlecchino, for Arlecchino is going to swear by his sacred flesh and blessed hunger. I will hold you to every letter of your oath, woman. Put me through any trial on my memory of my understanding you can think of, and not one iota of it will I forget, not a word, not a sigh, not a wink, not a movement of your limbs will I remember or, or repeat of what you did without the most perfectly accurate recollection. Then you dare, Princess Sheena. Then listen to Princess Sheena, man, for she will confess what she has never confessed. My love of hand alone is with me now. And when the will of heaven wears down his own, he will leave my house, and you can come in. Wait in this basket. Oh, that basket. In that basket until he is gone, and then we will see which of us can manage a powerful promise. Then you dare, Arlecchino. I, who can manage a million promises, promises without number. Very well, we shall see. Yes, we shall see. Are you ready? Ready. And none of your shouting and yawping. Do you hear? It is night, and my neighbors are tucked away in their beds, snoring and dreaming of modesty and heavenly rewards. Don't wake them, do you hear? Don't let them suppose that Francis Sheena's house is less virtuous than any of theirs. Whisper to me. Do you understand? I understand. Then when Pantalon finds it in his weakness to leave you, will you will enter. Shh. You value my virtue, not a sound. Pantalone! I thought I was meeting Coviello. Leandro coming from Coviello's house at this hour. And from whose house is Pantalone coming at this hour? Surely not Zani's. Eh, Pantalone! We lovers can abide each other's confidence. It was Zani's house, to be sure. Zani is such a blind fool, Leandro. What a comfort it is to have such a friend as Zani. As comfortable as having such a friend as Coviello. Quickly, come down the street with me and help me get rid of my masquerade. Yes, yes, then we can come back and masquerade as innocent friends. Leandro and Pantalone away all night on important business, spoken like a lover. What a fool that vinegar husband is to mix with that oily lover. And what a fool that lover is to let her husband look over his shoulder, Arlecchino. You are wise to stay in the basket in the morning when all the husbands are proffering about. Get down, Arlecchino, here I come, two more wise men. Zani, what are you carrying? Ah, uh, Coviello advised me. Will a little darling like to play with these? Princess Sheena forbade me to come back without them, and all night long Zani has run about getting them. Will they make him happy, Coviello? Will they please him? How did you come by a child, Zani? Has someone left one of the other door? That is my secret, mine and the crafty doctors who is tending him, and Pantalone will never laugh at me again. But we will laugh at him, eh, Zani? We have both outweighed him outwitted him. Think, Zani, that a man lives who is such a fool. Ah, the world is not wise, Coviello. The world is not wise. Zani, you have just returned. Coviello, how fortunate to meet you now. My good friend Leandro, Pantalo, my dear, what are you carrying there, Zani? For my newly erect child, Pantalo. A child? Where is it, Zani? For there's mother who has been watching over him this past night. Ah, oh, blessed child. Are you to be blessed to Pantalo? Not so blessed as you, Zani. Could I be honest and hope to be blessed in my child as you are in yours? True, Pantalone, very true. Very true, very true. And you have had a good night, too, Pantalone. Oh, very good, Coviello. Untroubled content? As untroubled as Zani's good friends. But Zani has been busy all night chasing another's pleasure. Pantalone to my friend. Zani has found pleasure in my charity and the toys he has there for his loved one. Pantalone to my friend. Pantalone too, as you know better than any man. And have you found pleasure in charity, too, Leandro? Ah, oh, great charity. And from a kind of toy, too. And Coviello, the good man, he has shown charity, too, tonight. Don't you think so, Pantalone? Charity with toys, Leandro. 
My whole night has been nothing but charity and joy. Charity indeed, Caviello, great charity. Well, it uh, was a blessed night indeed, of which all of us have nothing to remember but charity and mercy and nothing to reap in the morning but gratitude and contentment. Yes, a blessed morning. A blessed morning, a good morning. Pantalon, husband, at least you are with me again. My own wife, did you miss me? Not once did I shut my eyes for remembering you are gone, dear Flaminia. Husband, Coviello, thank God you are back this morning. My own Cynthia, were you anxious about my being gone? All night I lay awake wondering when you would be re when you would return. My own Cynthia, Zani, my husband, at least you are back from your errand. Safe and sound, good friend, says Sheena. Are you happy I did not despair and come back without the toys? If you had given up some and come back without them, your friend, says Sheena, would have been lost. Excellent, mother. A celebration, dear neighbors, this is a morning for rejoicing. Pantalone and Flaminia ask you all to dine, and we will celebrate these happy reunions of true wives and contented husbands. A banquet. Come, O oh blessed morning, a banquet. Zani, dear husband, bring my laundry basket into the house before we settle to this banquet. Yes, dear mother, yes, yes. Let us help you, Zani. Coviello, let us help Zani carry his burden. Ah, uh, Zani needs no help with baskets, Pantalone. Zani can carry baskets. For your sake, Zani. For Zani's sake, altogether. Altogether. Altogether, friends. Heave ho! My friend, the beggar, the doctor, my little helper, my conspirator, I promise. Doctor, what are you doing in my basket? In this, the bundle to be carried into your house? What a kindness we were doing for your wife. Kindness for my wife? Then it was a kindness return, because only last night I carried a chest into your home. Into your house. With just a, such a burden inside it. Zani? Don't let the world know that our good friend has a lover coming to his house. No, and Pantalone will keep it secret that only this morning did he meet a lover coming out of Coviello's house, who is, as all the world knows, a cuckold. Ha! Then tell it. He is a lover too, and of Pantalone's wife, whom, whom Pantalone could not please. Not please? I, who am a lover and a father too, not please. This, from an old jealous cuckold and an impotent old fool. I, impotent. Pantalone calls me impotent, I who produced a child bigger than Pantalone. No, no, he did not even produce a child. He produced a chest of lemons. Nothing but a chest of lemons. Ask the devilish doctor what a child I produced yesterday. Doctor! That is Coviello's mad country cousin who cannot utter a syllable out of his mouth. Latin. Latin comes out of his mouth and children out of the ground. That is how mad he is. Shout Latin at him. Shout it and sing it. That he will know you are a man of the silence. Tell him in Latin how Zani gave birth to a child. Save your Latin, and I will tell you in your mother tongue. If Zani has a child, it is Pantalone's. Pantalone has lain with his wife and shown her how children are begotten, and how he begot them on the sworn oath of his own wife. How does old dead fools and cuckolds beget them in their sick fancy? Listen to their sick fancy then, and tell Coviello how better to beget a child of by Pantalone than by bringing me into his house in a chest of lemons so that I might do what the deaf both of you have lost the memory of, to please a wife and beget a child. The both of us. A cuckold talks about the both of us. A cuckold tells us how to please a wife. Tell us. Tell us how to call Leandro to our beds and please a wife. Cuckold. I, a cuckold. They are cuckolds, cuckolds, cuckolds. Who well, are these men to be smart our virtues, Pantalone? What have you confessed? Coviello, has your wife deserved this indignity? Leandro. What has the world learned of our love? What it would have learned without my word or your reassurance. What it would learn of all these husbands and wives. For now the cat is out of the bag. And what have you lost now that has learned all? Honest wives, be honest, and just husbands be fair. Do any of you find yourselves this morning bereft of what you had last night? The lovers did not steal, and the wives did not lose their virtue in a single night. Virtue sets off meekly in the eye, in the leg, in the beckoning finger. And the slip of the tongue, long before she got to the way in the bed. And the eye, the leg, the finger, and the tongue are not born body, but learn to wander after the example of the husband or the lesson of the wife. Pant alone, teach your wife modesty, and she will teach you the seamless, seamlessness of love. Coviello, teach your wife contentment, and she will show you the abandon of love. Zani, Zani. Give your wife patience and pray for a heavenly reward. With all this done, you will have wisdom. Your folly, and remember this night always to bless me in the sky. 
Wise man, can you teach me how I too can find a blessing in this night's disguise? What am I to do to lose my folly and be content with my life? Do as these good people here are doing. Find wisdom and contentment and a folly greater than your own. Go to the Commedia and laugh at Arlecchino. Wise man, I am Arlecchino, and I have laughed at him until I have cried. Now I am lost, doubly damned and triply desperate. Thank you for your counsel, wise man. Do you take a fee? Friends, good neighbors, with the help of the basket and the wise Leandro, this morning has been blessed twice over. Come into our house, and we can celebrate our contentment that no husband and wives before us, and on my honor, none that will follow us can ever know on earth. Look at us, Leandro. Come, look at your work. Three husbands and three wives, all smiling, and not a single one with a deceit in spite of him he can call his own. Miraculous lover who makes husbands happy as well as wives. Come in and sit beside me, and tell me the secret of turning plain honesty to such so much profit. Good neighbors, come. Husband, dear wife, Corviello, dear Cynthia, Zane, ah, well, Arlecchino, have we forgotten you? Come in, dear fool, and share in our banquet. Thank you, fair lady, but not for Arlecchino. But, dear Arlecchino, here is a promise without tricks, without buts, with, without anything that can come of it but a true harvest. Dearest of all promises, Arlecchino can share no food and drink with you. What would become of Arlecchino with so much meat and wine inside him? Arlecchino has many follies, dear lady, but he is not so foolish as to, as, as to digest his injury and drown his wit. For what better thing can you do, fool, than fill your empty stomach and put your folly so deep? I can leave them alone, Flaminia. From my empty stomach, I get my whole wisdom, and from my folly, my whole prosperity. Besides, dear lady, Arlecchino is in a great hurry to be off to Bergamo. What is in Bergamo? Oh, there is a certain Isabella, who has a rich husband and a full larder. And do you know, Isabella keeps his eyes. If I get there before nightfall, she will open the door for me, and Arlecchino will win her and his salvation and everything with his wit. Then Flaminia is not so unkind that she will spoil your happiness with meat and wine. Goodbye, fool. Wise and beautiful lady, goodbye. Move, Arlecchino. Oh, you scrawny little centipede. Look at him move. Hurry up, Arlecchino. Bergamo, by nightfall, run, run to Bergamo and your own salvation. 